Okay. Yeah. All right. Don't do it. Here we are. Don't what episode? Uh, what episode are we on here, Eric? Thirteen. Thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. So it's 13 times that we've sat here and have talked about that this intro and what an intro that is. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, we 13 times in a row. Yeah. Same intro, never gets old. That's I'm going to interrupt you again. It's, it's amazing. Is it not the best? I can't it's pretty even good. get a word in. I know, because the intro is un. It's a good intro. It's a great intro. We'll leave it at that. It's a great and intro. So thanks for all your support on the intro. And that about wraps up today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> Another solid, uh, my favorite part of WSPN, uh, other than educating the, you know, the public about uh, the real estate and the happenings and the ins and outs is always our sponsor. And today we've got another uh, pretty awesome sponsor, awesome people. And uh, I think our vibe attracts our tribe. And this is the, this is the case again with, uh, with Rare Apparel. Check out the shirts. Um, so they specialize in celebrating and promoting Windsor Essex County, which is super cool, super rare. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, yeah. don't see a lot of that. I think there's a lot of negativity surrounding uh, Windsor Essex County in general, but yeah. uh, I think that's turning around. I think Rare is doing a great job of helping to make that change. Um, they've provided us with these fantastic personalized mugs as well. Yeah. Uh, my name's actually written on the inside there. Yeah. Those are yours. Yeah, 411 Pottery, they, they so sometimes they'll team up with other local uh, artists and producers and create some awesome stuff. So that's Tam and Scott are the owners there. I'm wearing the Walkerville hoodie. Born and raised. Um, that's, born and that's raised where, when it comes to myself. Actually, so. fun fact, born in Stratford. <clears throat> me, and the, uh, me and the Beebs. Keep each other company. Oh. Yeah, born, in, born in Stratford, Ontario. So maybe that's why I love uh, theater so much. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And of course, yourself, you uh, you, you were raised in uh, Tecumseh, which is where I live currently. Small world. Son of a gun. Who would have thought? Son of a gun. So um, all local artists celebrate and promote Windsor Essex, of course. Like you said, portion of the sales go back to community initiatives. They've got the neighborhood collection. We've used this company for clothes and gifts ourselves, whether it be prints of the area that somebody bought in um, or swag. Yeah, local, born and raised. We love supporting local. Uh, we suggest that you, uh, our viewers, do as well. So, uh, WSPN this week. What do we got on top here, yeah, Scott? Yeah. So we, uh, Paul and I, just got back from a final walkthrough. I think I think a lot of times the final walkthrough is under uh, appreciated. I think it's yeah. uh, under undervalued how important it is uh, a lot of the times right you do a final walkthrough there's not really any issues to deal with but on this particular one i mean there was nothing major but no definitely some things that needed to be addressed and uh you did a great job of taking care of that but yeah i don't know any any thoughts on on some things that you see at a final walkthrough you know what we uh, we went to the final walk through uh together on this one and uh you know we kind of just stood in the driveway after that a lot of action on the final walkthrough uh uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of things happened on it. All, all good things, no bad things. I think for us, it's our final moment to to make sure that our clients satisfied and happy. And in uh, our our final moment, as far as the transaction is concerned, to just show how much how much we care. So on this particular final walkthrough, we made sure that we had an issue where flat screen brackets were gone. Right. So keep in mind, buyers and sellers, whenever you sell a property, everything that's screwed and glued to the actual property becomes part of the property. It becomes a, a, fi a fixture of it. So, you know, unless it's excluded, then it is to stay. Our biggest gray areas are always the flat screen wall mounts and satellite dishes, stuff like that. Where Hot you, tubs. Where, yeah, where you, where, you, where you think it could go, but, uh, but it is actually to stay. So this one here had a couple flat screen wall mounts missing, kind of massaged that. They also left some medicine lights up. You know, just got got together with the agent who was who's been very awesome to deal with on this whole thing. Listen, flat screen wall mounts are gone. Are we leaving the Edison lights? Yeah, we're leaving the Edison lights. Okay, we'll wash that. You know, bar fridge was was gone. We didn't write that in. You know, just said to the agent, listen, our our, our bad. I'm not suggesting that every time a bar fridge is missing that it'll be there, but um, you know, just figured that issue out for the sellers and the, uh, the these days the nest cameras the doorbell cameras which were on the property those are staying as well and i think that was uh yeah and, you know we're there to look for other things as well we just had a huge rainfall we're we're there to make sure that the basement didn't yeah. flood that there's no signs of water uh that could be issue as well who's responsible for it? which insurance company yep. the property hasn't closed so technically the sellers are still responsible so in, in this case there were a few minor things but the big stuff 
wasn't wasn't an issue in this case, so that was good. But it is an important part of the transaction. Don't underestimate it. Don't undervalue it. it. Walk in with a plan. <clears throat> walk in with the contract in hand and make sure that everything that's supposed to be there is there and that the property is as you bought it or better. And the main goal of the final walkthrough, of course, is the property has to be in the same condition as when you negotiated the deal and it went firm. So this deal in particular was done probably two, three months ago. Um, a lot can happen between that time, especially with the rainfalls that we get and stuff like that. So we just want to go in there and make sure that the property is in the same condition and there's no issues. So yeah, pretty simple. So great great to uh, go on a final walkthrough with you. And uh, yeah, I guess we can get on to the next part of the um, show here, which is, is the market overall, what's happening here. Again, every week I'm still getting people that seem to think that the market's slowing or maybe dipping or crashing. I don't know what people think out there. But uh, the best way that I can put it for the market right now is that it's, it's just hit and miss. Um, there's still a lot of properties with a lot of offers right now. Uh, a couple in Walkerville this week, had, one had 11 offers, one had seven. Uh, those were properties I was personally involved in. Uh, then a couple uh, listings that I'm representing as well that didn't get as much action. One property had zero offers, another one only had one. So hit and miss is the best way I can describe it. Um, and that's relative to what we were seeing in January, February, March, where everything was just hitting, right? You put it yeah. on the market, everybody's bidding on the same stuff. Like really nothing, nothing slipped through the cracks at that time. Now there are some things slipping through the cracks, yeah. um, but it's definitely still a seller's market in my opinion. I think we're For sure. a far away away from being a buyer's market. Uh, but I think now is the time to be opportunistic if you're on the buying side. Yeah, the Ju July, um, August always presents an opportunity mm -hmm. to the buyers. Um, so I mean, if you're if you're active and you're buying out there, definitely uh, keep keep firing your shots, and it, it it should happen. If you're a seller out there, um, I mean, it's our job to make sure that your expectations are managed a little bit better. Um, I'd rather <coughs> over uh, overproduce than underproduce, and just letting you know, our job is always to report what's happening in the market to our sellers, and uh, and not really overthink it from there. Mm -hmm. But we got to get offers because our true value is in how we can negotiate. And, uh, and get those offers to a place that makes makes you happy, so. Yep, so the market's hit and miss, which means there's opportunities on the buy side, on the sell side, you just gotta be intelligent with your marketing strategy and set proper expectations. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of uh, um, just the economy overall and what's happening in Windsor, I know the University of Windsor and St. Clair College have announced that they are prepping for in-class school uh, starting this fall, yeah. in September. So I think uh, economically speaking for Windsor, that's a bit like the university and college are, are big businesses here. Uh, they employ a lot of people. It's a big factor for immigration and international students and students coming from other provinces and other cities across Ontario. Uh, they absorb, students absorb a lot of supply. Mm. A lot of students right now aren't living in Windsor because they don't have to, right? They're right. doing online courses. Uh, they can be wherever they want in the world and do their, do their classes. That's about to change. I expect that to impact the rental market significantly and also probably the resale market. I think you're gonna see a lot more investors coming in and um, snapping up properties to rent. Uh, so it's, th it's definitely an underappreciated <coughs> factor. Of it's a market. rental market that's already tight, right? I mean, Very we were talking tight. earlier about it as well, like the, the rents that some of these places get. I could have never um, imagined, uh, you know, something getting close to 3,000 bucks and it being, uh, it being a townhome, right? That used to be, Three thousand bucks used to be a big uh, executive lease. Sometimes even I have to realize that things things have changed. But my mind will always go back to two thousand eight, nine, ten, eleven when mm -hmm. things were different, right? And that's just uh, that's yeah. Just I think rents have doubled in, in about three years, which is yeah. pretty crazy. And that that is what makes Windsor one of the most investable cities in the country, is because you have a high rental rate combined with relatively low purchase prices. That means your cash flow positive nicely and making some good money. So investors out there, Windsor's still the place to be in my opinion, definitely in Ontario, one of the top spots to invest in the country. And this is happening without the border, without immigration, and with the schools shut down. Yeah. So plenty of room to the upside here in my opinion, but even right now yeah. at a snapshot, it's a, it's a good, good time to buy. So in, in, in general, you would say it's still a seller's market in your opinion? Absolutely, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think that we have a long ways to go in that regard. Yeah, uh, which I'm a fan of a balanced market, by the way. I don't, I don't like uh, a seller's market is not um, what we always want. We, we, I do like a balanced market. I've worked in a buyer's market and I've worked in a seller's market and I've worked in a balanced market. Um, it's been a seller's market for a long time. That creates a lot of frustration on, on one end. A balanced market um, is, is, is obviously a happy medium. Yeah, a balanced market with a slight 
tinge to the upside is, yeah. is ideal, right? Kind of everybody wins, it's a little bit more balanced. And I'm not out here promoting a seller's market by any means. Mm. I'm just reporting um, my view of the market and what I see out there every day. I think that's, yeah. a, that's our job here. Um, so by no means do I think it's necessarily a good thing, uh, unless you happen to own real estate, then you could consider it a good thing. But yeah. uh, like Paul said, it does frustrate a lot of people. Um, and uh, from the investment that investor angle, when you understand these macroeconomic factors, you can predict the next year, two, three, four years of supply and demand and make educated decisions now that will pay off in the future. And we're just here to help you kind of do that as well. But a balanced market would help a lot of people and it would definitely help a lot of our buyers as well. I just don't see when that's going to happen, though. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, Although as, as much as it, uh, it's, it's a happy costs medium, but it's yeah, we're, through the roof land. You can't buy it. Uh, labor's in a severe shortage. Uh, it's the perfect storm. Um, new construction um, properties right now are prices are through the roof. Yeah, you know so, and that that brings me back to another uh, point, which I think single family uh, rental properties are a great buy as investments right now, because you could not build these properties for what they're selling for. Uh, if you can get something around the 400k or under mark, yeah, yeah, great investment opportunity there. But uh, yeah. I think it's right when you hit that 450 mark where it, depending on the property, of course, where it just becomes a little tough, the, the numbers become tight. But yep. single family residential as opposed to a condo, you don't have the condo fees and the taxes, to be honest, they're kind of similar, am I right? Definitely, and, and that's a great way of putting it. When I'm comparing a single family residential property for 400,000 with a yard, a driveway, a basement, and more square footage, these new construction condos are hitting 460, 470, 480. And I can buy a single family home for 400, that's a market arbitrage. I don't think the market in general, uh, the investor market is really appreciating. Uh, that means to me that those single family homes have a long ways to go yeah. because a lot of people, uh, as attractive as the condos are, a lot of families simply can't live in a condo. Yep. Right? If you have yep. one child or two childs or two children, yeah, two, two childs, childs, two childs. Uh, you, you know, you're not gonna be able to put it in a two bedroom condo. Yeah. Uh, it being the, chi the, chi the child, so. <laughs> I'm just thinking of a, I'm just thinking of a, the, yeah. of a Two Chain song or whatever, you know, or uh, whatever his name is. I got two childs, but. <laughs> That's just where my mind is going for whatever, we, we for whatever is anyway. Here. So two um, childs, no condo, single family, got it. Yeah, so um, big yeah. arbitrage though. I love no, I agree. arbitrage. I agree, and then again, it's those condo fees that just kill your. Yeah, uh, the condo fees. Kill your uh, your Even bottom a, line. A two hundred and fifty dollar condo fee is the equivalent of about fifty thousand dollars of mortgage payments. So it's almost you could almost argue that you're paying yeah. five hundred thousand dollars for that condo. Your your mortgage payment would be the same as yeah. a five hundred thousand dollars single family. Yeah, great way of putting it actually. Yeah. yeah. Now, of course, they do take care of maintenance and things like that for the yeah. uh, exterior. You're not going to have a roof payment uh, repair or anything like that, but still, it's definitely a way to look at it. So big arbitrage available there for any investors. And uh, yeah, that kind of wraps up my investor angle. All right, there it is. Lucky episode number 13. And uh, my phone's ringing just on time and uh, rare apparel. Thank you so much for the hoodie, Walkerville. Uh, they know me well, the, the company crew for you, the mugs. Um, the support too, right? Uh, Scott and Tam, uh, great, great supporters of ours. And uh, be fresh and uh, stay rare.